On any given day, a young person's mental health issues may lead to a crisis, whether it's a potential danger to self or a danger to others. When that crisis interferes with the individual's ability to function and there's a clear need to stabilize them, law enforcement and school staff must be prepared to intervene. As a law enforcement professional, I know firsthand how difficult it can be to respond to a mental health or substance abuse crisis. Whether it's one of us or school personnel on the scene, we want the best possible outcomes for everyone. And in my experience, we can all make better decisions with the support of the mobile response team. Life Management Center now has a mobile response team to assist you. The team was created through funding received in response to recent tragic school shootings. The team provides on-demand intervention services wherever a behavioral health crisis occurs, including homes, schools, and ERs. If the crisis is in a home or another remote non-school location, law enforcement will be asked to accompany our team for the safety of all involved. The mobile response team serves anyone in need, focusing on those between ages 3 and 25 in Bay, Calhoun, Gulf, Holmes, Jackson, and Washington counties. Our goals are to lessen crisis trauma, divert individuals from ERs and the traditional court system, and prevent unnecessary psychiatric hospitalization. We're also here to help you identify potential crises before they occur. Simply call the mobile response team anytime, day or night, and a behavioral health professional with specialized intervention training will assist you, either in person at your location or through an electronic remote assessment, depending on proximity, time of day, or if it's a weekend. Once on site, our first job is to evaluate and assess the individual, then make a safety plan for him or her and any others who may be affected. Depending on the situation, we can also provide stabilization services, supportive counseling, education and coping skills, and direct links to mental health and substance use services. And the mobile response team stays engaged with coordination and check-ins throughout the 72-hour period following crisis assessment. If we can't make an effective safety plan or otherwise address the situation, our professionals are trained in proper Baker Act protocol, which may include consulting with law enforcement and asking them to initiate a BA-52. Let's learn more about the Baker Act. Passed into law as the Florida Mental Health Act of 1971, the Baker Act allows people with mental illnesses to be held involuntarily for up to 72 hours in a mental health treatment facility. This can be initiated by judges, law enforcement officials, doctors, or mental health professionals. Here at Life Management Center, we believe it's quite valuable for everyone involved in crisis intervention to understand what the Baker Act does and does not allow and require. Let's start with the criteria. Number one, there is reason to believe the person is mentally ill. Second, he or she has refused a voluntary exam or is not able to determine on their own whether the exam is necessary. This includes minors who are unable to consent to a voluntary admission without a hearing. And third, without treatment, the individual is likely to suffer neglect or to harm himself or someone else in the near future. In our work, we come across some common misunderstandings about the Baker Act, so it's important to address those too. First, there does not need to be imminent danger to self or others. If someone talks about or threatens a future action, for example, I'm going to kill myself when I get home from school, that can warrant a Baker Act. If a person is delusional, and that delusion can lead to serious harm or death, a Baker Act may be proper even if suicide or violence isn't explicitly mentioned. Third, the person does not need to be held for a full 72 hours. If they've been examined and it's determined that they're no longer a threat to themselves or others, they may be released. Now what does need to happen within 72 hours is one of three things. The patient must be released, checked into the mental health facility voluntarily, or approved for a stay beyond 72 hours through a court petition. And the law requires that under the Baker Act, children must be evaluated within 12 hours and adults within 24 hours. Think of the mobile response team as a tool to link people in crisis to the services they need while possibly avoiding a potentially traumatic inpatient placement. In the first three months of the program, we had 200 calls and were able to divert from inpatient services for 136 of those. That means these individuals received other treatment and avoided hospitalization. As a result, deputies didn't need to spend time transporting people, and children were spared from unnecessary and often traumatic separation from their families. Whether you're a law enforcement officer, school staff, or anyone else who may need to respond to a mental health crisis, remember that the mobile response team is here for you. If we can help in any way, please let us know.